San Francisco's Tenderloin has a long history of crime, open drug use, and homelessness. That's nothing new, but what is new is that the people most accustomed to it are now calling for help. Some volunteers who help out in the troubled neighborhood are now scared to step foot in it. And as John Ramos reports, now they're appealing directly to city leaders for help. San Francisco's Tenderloin has long been a place of human turmoil, but even those whose mission it is to show compassion say things have gone too far. No more chicken, okay? Outside St. Anthony's, they were handing out hot lunches to anyone who needed a meal. And though it may be God's work, CEO Nils Banky says it's getting harder to find people willing to do it. And our volunteers, our staff are uh, not wanting to come to us and and, and participate because it is so dangerous to really walk the streets, or at least that's their perception. The heightened fear stems from a shooting two weeks ago at the corner in broad daylight that left a man in critical condition. Since then, there was another shooting and two stabbings, leaving two people dead. Banky says even the people who live on the streets are reluctant to come to the area. That they're really afraid to come and even come to the dining room during the daytime to have lunch with us because of the situation on the street. He points to the brazen open-air drug sales on Leavenworth Street as the source of the increase in violence. And though his entire mission is to be compassionate to the down and out, Banky says enough is enough. St. Anthony's will meet with the DA and police chief on Thursday to discuss the lack of public safety and demand accountability. How hard can it be? I mean, we're like three blocks away from City Hall. The police station is like two blocks up here. And it looks like this on Leavenworth. Like, I, I can't compute how this can be allowed to happen. And others in the nonprofit community agree. The Salvation Army operates a 110-bed supportive housing complex, but Captain Arwen Rodriguera is frustrated by the city's practice of putting people into housing without regard to the drug or mental health problems they may be suffering. It's once you're in a house, you're there, problem solved. And what we're seeing bleed out onto the streets is many of the people are either dying there in their addiction, so it's an expensive, paid for tomb, or they come back out to the streets and contribute to things like drug dealing. And then there are the kids. The Tenderloin is home to more than 3,000 children, but you rarely see them because it's not safe to play outside. Bita Nazarian directs 826 Valencia, a creative writing tutoring program, and says her students often write about their love for the Tenderloin, but she knows they are also suffering trauma from what they see every day. I think with the pandemic, things have been exacerbated um, in the neighborhood. We're just see a lot more of the crime and the unhealthy behaviors are more visible. And it's a problem that should have been addressed a long time ago, in my opinion. Um, because the children have lived here this entire time. These are people committed to helping their fellow man, but they see the damage being done by well-intentioned policies. And the feeling now is compassion and reason do not have to be mutually exclusive. St. Anthony's is working to create the Golden Gate Greenway. It's a block-long open space with benches and play equipment to give, to give neighborhood kids just a safe place to play outside.